All right, guys, welcome back. Another exciting episode. We got breaking news for you guys. Uh, EYL University is on fire, and we want to make sure that everybody is included. So we have a new promo that we are running 40% off our annual membership to EYL University, which includes weekly webinars, over 47 past webinar courses that are archived, uh, access to our private real estate Facebook group, access to the book and movie club, and much, much more. So if you're interested, go to www.eyluniversity.com right now and enter code earners for annual membership 40 percent off the annual membership let's go attention attention earners what's up this week we got two powerful episodes from two beautiful women first up we got the amazingly inspiring entrepreneur ronnie brown such a golden spirit that's today at five friday at five we have author and activist jamila t davis if you don't know her story please tune in you don't want to miss it that's two episodes from two powerful women earners like subscribe comment we love you peace All right, guys, welcome back. Another virtual edition of Earn Your Leisure. Yeah, back again. Yeah. We're getting the hang of this thing. That's a fact. Well, <laughs> a few technical difficulties. Apparently. <laughs> oh. So, yeah, this is an exciting episode for sure, for sure. Shout out to Jamila T. Davis for um, introducing this young lady that we're about to. Yeah, Jermaine Miller as well. He, Jermaine he, Miller, he yeah, yeah that's a fact. He was, yes, for sure. Shout out to Jermaine Miller. So, um, we, this is a, a, a conversation that we haven't had yet. Everything is a conversation that we haven't had. That's the good yeah. thing with Ernie Alicia. Every week is something different. So um, Ronnie Brown is a phenomenal entrepreneur, mother. She's really big on social media. Mm -hmm. She has a company called Girl CEO. And um, pretty much what it is is she empowers women and shares tips on how to build social media platform, and not only just build a social media platform, how to monetize a social media platform, yeah. how to build an online community, and just general entrepreneur tips yeah. in general. She's a brand expert. She has a podcast. Uh, she's a podcaster, fellow podcaster. Shout out to that. For sure. We got to get on her podcast, for sure. That's a fact. Soon come. And uh, she's a best-selling author. She's TED Talk. Yeah, I watched it. Yeah, Good one. so a lot going on. So um, we're going to talk about a lot. We're going to talk about you know entrepreneurship. We're going to talk about social media, how to monetize, building a community, all that good stuff. But before we start, thank you, thank you for joining us. Appreciate it. Thank you guys for having me and being so patient because I was a part of that technical issue today. <laughs> uh, we we have, I, I tell people all the time we have, we always have technical difficulties. The end product is all that matters, and that's what they're going to see. So it's all good. <laughs> For sure. So, all right. So, let's get into it. So, you have uh, a very large following on social media. Your your business page has, I think, uh, two hundred and thirty eight thousand followers. You have over a hundred thousand followers. Seventy five. One hundred seventy five thousand right? followers. Yeah. Um, and like I said, you got book, you got podcast, all that stuff. But your journey and being an entrepreneur. Um, didn't start like right away. So you have an interesting story. So can you talk about that as far as the lead up? to what you what you do now because i know you you know um yeah you're from dc originally right yeah i'm from washington dc so i grew up in washington dc shout out to everybody that's listening that grew up in dc um i graduated from dunbar senior high school so definitely crimson tide and i grew up, <laughs> <laughs> I grew up in the projects of dc so definitely not the white house definitely an entire different environment and um, I had my first kid at 16 years old and I always tell people that's kind of where my, my story started just being a teen mom growing up in the city um, in the inner city and taking my son to school with me every single day being determined to graduate and really change the trajectory of my life and that's where my story initially got started I was just determined to go in a different direction you know when you're coming up and you're having a kid young then you have all the odds stacked against you. You know, a lot of people are doubting you. All your mamas, all your friends, mom, they're like, stay away from her. She pregnant. She's a bad influence. <laughs> oh, this is not the person I want my, my kid hanging around. So I went through a lot of rejection in my life. And I spent most of my um, 20s really trying to build myself back up and show people that my life wasn't over everywhere i went people were like oh you didn't go to college you know your life is over oh you didn't do this you had kids too young it's really going to affect you so i was really determined to show people that 
I could. And I spent most of my younger years just really hustling and working hard and trying to find my lane. And I grew up in an environment where guys, there, there were no businessmen to really look up to. You know, there were street guys where I grew up at. So I looked at what they used to do and I kind of grasped that concept and I just turned it into the business model of learning sales, right? Learning how to work hard and get up every single day. And uh, that's how my story kind of started. I um, got fired from my job. And at that time I was on my second kid. I was 19. I had my first kid at 16. I had another kid at 19. And I was riding home from that job after getting fired. I was um, three minutes late. (laughs) <laughs> where'd you work at which yeah. where'd you work at i was working at a call center right oh, y'all know those call centers don't play you late for work <laughs> okay so i was working at a call center and i was pregnant with my second kid and i was three minutes late i was nine months pregnant and they fired me i got down on my knees and i asked my supervisor i would never forget white lady about six feet i begged her to let me keep the job i got on my knees and i I was literally crying like let me keep this job i need this job i'm pregnant with my second kid the holidays are around the corner she let me she said okay well think about it she let me work the whole day and then at the end of the day she called me in the office and she's like no we had to go in a different direction gotta let you know damn pink slip pink slipped me and i was riding home dude when i tell you i was in tears when you ride home and the radio was off, that's when you know you got a lot of stuff going through your mind. So I'm riding home. I'm thinking to myself, what am I going to do to change my life around? And I get home and my son is there looking at me. I need to figure out how I'm going to pay this rent. And I just got on Google. I started researching, you know, how to make products by hand at this time. I'm, I'm desperate. I have like $300 to my name. I'm like, okay, I got to figure something out. I start Googling. I'm making handmade products in my house and I'm broke. So at this point, this is back in 2009, right? I'm broke. So I don't have money for a graphic designer. I don't have money for someone to come and hook this website up to make it look fly for me. I'm starting from scratch and I need to get a few groceries and figure some things out to cover me over the next month or two. So I see everybody that I went to school with because my behind did not go to college because I had to choose. You go to college or you go to work and take care of your son. So I chose to go to work and take care of my son. But I saw everyone that was going to college, they were using something called Facebook, right? And they were connecting with all of their college friends on Facebook. So I'm thinking, hell, let me try this out. I know these people, I didn't go to school, but I know them. So I get on there and I see all these people sharing photos, but the photos that they're sharing are photos of like college campus and parties and having a good time. Meanwhile, I'm over here doing mom life at 19, trying to figure it out. So I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to flip this a little bit. Let's see if this works for me. I can't afford a website. That's out of the question right now. I'm like, let me post some of these products that I made in my house on here as pictures to see if anyone will respond because I'm broke and I can't get this. Yeah, yeah. So what kind of of products? when, When you got home, right, you take that long drive home. And you sit down in the couch and you like, what are you thinking? Like, I'm going to take that piece of cloth and make like, what are you making? I remember talking to at this point, I remember talking to a lady who I admire. She was like a mentor to me. And she told me because I always wanted to be an entrepreneur, but I just didn't have it all together at that time. She told me whatever business you start, take a look at what you spend most of your money on. And that's the, that's the direction that you want to go in because that shows your interest. So I look around my house and I'm, I see pin candles, all this makeup, you know, body scrubs. It, I'm in my bathroom looking, right? That's the first place I go to when I'm trying to take a break. All the moms that have kids in here, y'all know that bathroom break is a good vacation, right? So I go in the bathroom and I'm seeing candles, makeup body scrubs. So I start making handmade beauty products. And that was my first business. I got on Google. I learned how to make candles. I learned how to make mineral makeup. I learned how to make scrubs. I Googled up vendors for packaging. I got my printer out. 
right? I started making labels, smacking the labels on them. They look terrible. When I look back some of my at some of my pictures on Facebook. You guys can go check that out. But it was just a part of the process. And I slapped the label on it and I started taking pictures with my cell phone and I'm uploading it onto Facebook once everything comes, everything, everything arrives. And I literally start getting feedback from the people who are on social media following me. They're saying, well, how does this smell? You know, how does this look? How does this feel? And this was back in the day. So this is when people were using PayPal buttons. I don't know if y'all remember PayPal buttons or not, but this is when you can go on PayPal and you would literally create a little button on there and you would paste or embed the button or it would create a link where you can paste the link and a person can click on the button and they could buy it. And I started pasting these PayPal buttons onto my Facebook page and people started buying my products from me. And from that moment on, I knew that I was onto something. Um, I looked up and I was literally at a place where I was paying my rent with handmade products that I was making as a mom of two. That's crazy because I remember, I'm assuming we're probably around the same age, but I remember when that when Facebook first came out, I was actually, I went to school in Maryland, so I wasn't too far from, from D.C. I was in UMBC, shout out to Baltimore. And I remember when it first came out and it was the Facebook, and yeah, you had to have a college uh, email. You had to have like a EDU, uh, which is like an education email to actually be a part of Facebook. So when you tell that story, I just kind of get flashbacks. So that's crazy. That's All right, so, so you're early on. You're early on as far as without really even probably realizing like you know what you were doing um, early on with the e-commerce selling things on social media because people have been selling things online for a while like uh, yeah. eBay before social media but selling things actually on social media platforms like Facebook just recently set it set up their That's their online shop right yeah. like just now it happened two weeks ago yeah, yeah. Online shop now, so you can directly uh, shop. Yeah, so you can shop through Facebook and Instagram allows you now to shop. So that's like a whole new feature. But what you did was kind of brilliant, right? Like you turned your Facebook page into your website because you couldn't afford a website at the time. <laughs> exactly, and that's how I got started. And and social media is way more interactive and engaging than a website. Like I always tell people, like a web, you got to have a website nowadays, like a business card, so people know you're official. But nobody's going to your website, like just for no reason yeah. people go to your social media all the time for no reason like mm -hmm. that's that's way more that every single day if you follow somebody if you're not caught in the algorithm and you don't see that post you're going to see what they're posting you're not going to just see a website every single day unless you're going to that website every day right I mean, what's the likelihood of the website actually changing yeah <laughs> so all right so so now you, you kind of catch the, the the swing of it and you say you're making enough money to um to pay your rent and that's Facebook. So where, where does it go from there? So from there, I literally build my business up to a place where I open an actual storefront salon. So I open a salon and I start selling my products um, actually at the salon. The problem that I realized with doing that, I started making a ton of money. But as a mom, um, I didn't have time to be with my children. And that's the part that I really didn't understand about business, because when you're physically somewhere and you're exchanging time for money, um, then you are literally having to show up 24 seven. And when you're in that environment, it's late nights. I mean, you're there 10, 11 o'clock at night on a Saturday. So I wasn't getting that time with my kids. It was to the point I was bringing my children with me um, to the salon. And I said, there has to be a different way because we are kind of taught that when you open up this business and you have a window and there are bricks that you've made it. Right. So I accomplished this dream of opening this location. And then I'm sitting there after opening it and a few in a year or two goes by and I'm like, man, this isn't what I thought it would be. So then I went back into the Internet world. That's when the Instagram came out. And this was uh, Instagram just popped up and people were just like posting pictures on there. And I'm like, wow. OK, so then I started um, selling more products online. I partnered with a company and I learned that I can literally not have to be present and I can share and market products online 
and make money. Um, I started to do that. And within my first 17 months, I do like a million dollars just posting pictures of products on Instagram. So you started with the candles and then the makeup line. And then you added more products. How'd you go about manufacturing and di distribution? Because, I mean, you, you said you didn't come from a business background. Is somebody teaching you that? Are you self-taught? Can you spread in that process? So what happened was when I started the business initially, it was my product line. When I learned how to sell on social media, I partnered with the company. They were doing mass production. They were doing, um, they had all the products manufactured. So I came on as an affiliate is there of theirs and I started marketing their products online right so I I got to a place where I, within my first 15 months I had made like a million dollars and I started to learn how to sell how to grow how to market online how to generate leads and all of that stuff and right now and you know in my life where I'm at, where I am right now I'm formulating my own product line so I'm coming out with my own product line right now but I sold as an affiliate and created that level of income for about five to six years before I learned the game. That's a valuable lesson. And, and I heard you say this before, there, there is a lesson to be learned in every job that you have. There's something to learn in every job you have. So I know you are a janitor, you worked at a law firm and a banker and a travel agent, all revolving around sales. Can you talk about the person, the importance of learning each lesson as you went along to, to where it brought you to today? Well, I think the biggest thing that I learned was to stay humble. That's the first thing. Uh, the second thing I learned was to not allow other people to see the value in you before you see the value in yourself. Um, I learned a lot when it came to selling and getting people to become customers. When, when I walked away from that business and that partnership, I had probably over 100,000 customers in the system at that point. All right. This is over five year time period. So what I learned was that the secret sauce was me. Sometimes in life, we don't see the value of what we bring to the table. We think that when someone presents us with the opportunity, uh, they're blessing us. And, you know, it's a great opportunity. But the truth is, sometimes we are the blessing to them. We have the secret sauce. And it starts with us not having confidence in ourselves. So some of the biggest, one of the biggest things that I've learned is like, you have to know your value. And if you don't know your value, there is someone else who knows your value and will know your value more than you know it for yourself, right? Sometimes someone can give you a small commission and you're, th and you're thinking, man, this is great. But the truth is you they may give you 15% where you can get 80%, but you didn't ask for 80 because you were so excited about the 15. So what I learned is really understand the value that you bring to the table. Um, another thing that I really learned from that experience was to take the time and think about the lesson in what you're doing. When I was mopping floors, I hated it. I was so freaking embarrassed to be a janitor. I used to lie to people and tell them I was a medical assistant. You know how you wore the smocks? They didn't know. They thought I was a medical assistant. I was a housekeeping, okay? I was so embarrassed about just to do that job. But the truth was, when I was doing that job, I had to be humble. I met sick people that were dying and I would be in those rooms with people who had stage four cancer and they were super sick and they would talk to me and they would just really educate me on just staying focused with what's important in life. But it's not all about money. It's not all about success and just seeing them on their deathbeds, wealthy people. You see wealthy people on their deathbeds and they're not worried about their businesses. They're crying out for their families. So it put a lot of things in perspective for me to remember that my children are priority, that being present is priority and to not allow money and success to just overtake everything so let me ask you this let's go back to this f for a minute because i'm interested um so all right i got a couple questions when you made that you said you made a million dollars in 15 months selling products so my first question is what, what products were you selling so i was selling beauty and wellness products online for a company so beauty that's like hair sheen what is beauty? so it was skincare it was detox products it was weight loss it was in the realm of my first business, so it was already in my lane. It's, it was skincare, weight loss, detox, all health and wellness like, products. Like, like the tummy tees. No, that's before. Similar that's before. That, that's before tummy tees. Okay. Tummy tees is a. I that's think late, that's that late. that's a wave that is recent. Yeah, but that was that's recent, but 
it's similar to weight loss, beauty, all of that stuff. I don't want to mention the company because they're not getting no. No, 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 no. You good? You good? You good? No, no, um, no, you don't. So, all right. So, so, so my next question is is how you because around that time, 2012, we started a um a fashion blog, fashion wave, fashion wave. Because um at 2012 was when I shout out to Val, a good friend of ours. Yep, yep. Um, she's also really big on social media and um. She was like my first inspiration on social media. But even before she became big on social media, she's one of the people that introduced me to Instagram in 2012. And like you said, that was early Instagram 2012 when people were just still showing pictures of their dogs and it was more of a community feel. At first, I remember you even had to have an iPhone. They didn't have Instagram for Androids. Yeah. So, but I used to follow this page called Fashion Climax. Fashion Climax was like a lookbook. And they had like... Them too. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So we they found had, out who she was too. <laughs> they had they had like a million followers back then, and um, I was just following them. I don't even know how I how why I started following, them, but I started following. Them. But then I realized what they was doing, and they was they was running ads early before anybody was running ads. And I'm like, this is crazy because like they would have somebody with an outfit on. And they would tag the designer and like this is where you can get it and twenty percent off code fashion over yep. fashion um, climax whatever, but nobody really knew that it was an ad because it was like it, it was a, like it. it was a soft sell. So when I realized what was going on, I was like, this is crazy. Like this is a way you, instead of people paying for an ad in the New York Times or whatever, like you could pay five hundred dollars to to this girl. I'm assuming that's what she was getting paid. I didn't know what she was getting paid, but I'm like, you could reach a million people. I'm like, nobody's doing this right now. This Probably, is crazy. Yeah, a million at that time. Yeah. So I asked when we um I went to the guys, I'm like, yo, we should start a fashion blog and then we could promote <laughs> other designers. This so is we, a true story. And, and so we started a fashion page called Fashion Wave. We actually got it to like twelve thousand followers. Yeah, we was moving. Yeah, but um we kind of abandoned it. But I say that to say that was early on, like and I just saw that, and I was just kind of, there was no course, there was no blueprint article or nothing. Like, that was early on. So, being how was you selling early on in regards to that? Yeah, so early on, it was results. It was re result-driven. So, it was me using the product. It was me just being relatable, me showing products on my timeline. Back then, your pictures were blurry. You know, there wasn't, there were no presets. There were no, people were walking around with cameras. You know, nowadays, everyone has these big, huge cameras that they're walking around with. I was uploading. It was showing the journey. That's how I started. My Instagram was like a diary. It was more of a digital blog. This is what I'm doing every day. It was me sitting um, around dreaming and talking about the things that I wanted to do. And the cool thing about my social media page is all of those pictures are still there. See, a lot of people, they get to a certain point and they delete all the crunchy stuff. I kept all the crunchy stuff on my social media. So you can go back. I've been on Instagram since 2011. So all of those pictures are still there. It was me posting my day. It was me talking about the things that I wanted to do. It was me posting the product, using the products, drinking the products, putting the products on, showing the people my daily routine. And that's how I grew my audience that way. And that's how they started to buy from me, from watching me do something and use something on a consistent basis. You were the original influencer. Yeah, but I didn't know what the heck I was doing. I was like just trying different things. Back then, you just you just try. And I think that's a, a really big thing that we have to keep in mind. Sometimes we don't start because we want the perfect blueprint on how to do something. You just do it and you figure out what works as you go. So how many followers did you have back then? Oh, I started with zero followers just like everybody else. <laughs> I mean, I mean, like when you was making money, when you made the million dollars, how many followers did you have? Um, I probably had less than five Probably less than five to ten thousand followers. Less than five. That wow, wow. Yeah, so, five to ten. So, so the, the the young lady who has a child at sixteen has now made a million dollars. What what's that? What's that thought process like? How, how, what are you thinking at that point? Like, this is something I got to continue. Like the family work balance. What what's going on with, in your mind at that time? Well, you think you made it. That's the first thing. You think you made it. I, I talked to so many entrepreneurs, and now I mentor so many women. Everyone wants to make a million dollars. To be honest with you, you make a million dollars after you make it. It's like, then what? Right? So after I made a million dollars, of course, my goal was to start to diversify my income. I went and got, got a 
got into a Stanley Morgan, got an investment firm and started to, you know, get stocks and bonds and get, try to get into the stock market and get a financial advisor and accountant and a bookkeeper and all these different things. Um, but the, the truth was, I made that income off of like 10 to 15 percent commission that that company was giving me. Right. So as I started to make more money, I started to invest more money into knowledge and I started to invest in like courses and masterminds and getting connected with people who were multimillionaires. And as I started to get on those courses and understand what was going on, I started to realize, hold on. I, there's something missing here. There's more, right? There's more opportunity out there. And I started to connect myself with people who are a little more educated. So then you start becoming hungry for wisdom. And then the, the ownership comes back around. Because right now we have a ton of influencers that are online marketing products for different companies. But the truth is the people who are winning are the companies, right? And the influencers are literally, we sell our data. We don't understand that our data is so valuable, that our platforms are so valuable and you start selling it. And I started to do research and I started to understand where the where the economy was going, but where technology was going overall. So I started to think, no, I need to create something that I own because I can't keep pimping my platform and giving my my data away for pennies because that's what I was learning in the masterminds. Yeah, um, and that's something that's extremely important. And uh, the 5,000 follower thing, I don't want to just breeze over that because that's crazy that you was able to make that much money with 5,000 followers. But also, that's before I think Instagram had an algorithm. So your yeah. 5,000, like Probably now if you have 100,000, it's like really 5,000 because only 5,000 people seeing your actual post. Yeah. But yeah. back then it was a little different. But also that, that goes to... Um, Something that Ryan Leslie said on our podcast. Shout out to Ryan, Ryan where he Leslie. was like, a lot of times you can make more money with a niche audience. Like if people, 5,000 people that's really, really devoted to you is actually more valuable than having a million people that are just following you because just cuz. Like, you know what I mean? So yeah. I, it's like, I know for a fact that we can make way more money, have made way more money than pages with 3 million followers because it's like a lot of these pages or, you know, people that have 3 million followers, they don't really have a following for a reason right they're following them because you know they might be a, a pretty girl or whatever yeah. it's but entertainment yeah outside of <laughs> outside of fashion nova or the tummy t situation you're struggling because you don't really have a product to sell yourself you don't have any courses you don't have any platform so now you're just looking for other people to pay you to promote for them which is okay but like you said, like that's not really the, the big goal. The big goal is actually to be able to have your own thing that you can promote. And now you actually are in control of it. And now you get to, you know, kind of position it however you want. Yeah. And that's something that Derek Ferguson also said, that data is the new goal of our generation. So like oh, we, yeah. have, we, we have to know that and we have to position ourselves to be able to use it for our own benefit. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, that was an interesting backstory for sure. Um, so in the next segment, we're going to go over some different tips that small businesses and just influencers can use um, to help grow their page because that's what people really are interested in. Right. And um, it's a lot of different strategies. Uh -huh. We've used some strategies we, we know personally. Um, and I'm sure you have some different tips as well. So yeah, people yeah. don't be listening to like 5,000. I got that. I'm yeah. trying to make a million. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So we, we, we go into that next. All right. So this is a conversation that is extremely important to influencers, to business owners. I said this the other day, and it's been unfortunate. Um, since coronavirus, 40% of uh, African-American businesses have um, completely went under. Yeah. And that's more than any other ethnic group. And there's a lot of different reasons for that. But one of the main reasons I personally think is that the majority of our businesses that we start are local brick and mortar businesses. Mm -hmm. So barbershops, restaurants beauty salons beauty salons sneaker stores things of that nature where it's like hey it's already a limiting business model not to say some people get offended not to say that brick and mortars can't be successful brick and mortars can be successful but i just feel like if you don't have an avenue to make money online you don't really have a business at this point in time because there's too many variables if you're just relying on a brick and mortar yeah. and social media i think is a is a 
a must have. Like yeah. you cannot have a business if you don't have a social media presence. Yeah. Even if you're not planning on making money on social media, at the very least, you should have it for marketing purposes. Because yeah, you could have a scalable product. Like you could, if you're going to do a brick and mortar, have a scalable product that comes out of that brick and mortar. We saw that with uh, with our boy Wade. Right, he Wade had, the barber. He did the barber. He's from DC too. Yeah, he's from DC. Well, he's from Maryland, right outside DC. Yeah, he had the. Yeah. Yeah, he okay. created a product that was scalable, and now he's off, and off to the races, man. Ten, eight figures, nine figures, who knows? Yeah, so, um, so yeah, and before I start, too, I wanted to acknowledge this, because the thing with Earn Your Leisure is that we bring on all different types of people, because everybody can relate to somebody, and we've had a bunch of people that have um, been incarcerated, mm -hmm. we've had a bunch mm -hmm. of people that went to Ivy League schools, we had a bunch of people that just did a variety of different things, but the reason why I said incarcerated is that a lot of men sometimes... Um, women too but mostly men they get discouraged because they're like if I have a criminal background I can't become an entrepreneur and that's not true we, we see that all the time with some of our, our best guests our most you know prestigious alumni yeah, have, most have, have, have criminal records so that's for, the, that's for the young men but a lot of women um, might you know, have a child early yeah. or a teenage mom situation how, how like many, that how many yeah. have been told yo your life is over this right. is it, it what are you doing? Exactly. Like you said, so, some of the things you experienced. So before we start, I just wanted to, because I wanted to say that before, but um, I think that that's encouraging as well. And I'm glad that we can highlight somebody that, you know, was a teenage mother, but that doesn't mean that you, you can't be successful. That doesn't mean that your life is over. Um, and, you know, no matter what path your life takes, that's your path mm -hmm. and you can't define it by somebody else's path. So that's one of the good things with the platform, like I said, is we get to highlight so many different people and somebody can relate to somebody's journey um so i'm sure somebody's listening to this that might be a teenage mom or might have been a teenage mom and has given up on their dreams yeah. it's, it's never too late so i just wanted to throw that in there but um all right so making money online um yes we're going to talk about some different strategies that we use but yeah what are some tips for businesses or um you know influencers that may have a following or maybe trying to build their following to actually because that's a real hard thing for a lot of people to actually figure out how to actually monetize it's like a podcast people don't yeah. know how to monetize podcasts like what are some tips that you can give like some business owners or or anybody to monetize online for sure i think the first thing that you want to keep in mind is really take the time to sit down and think about the problem that you're going to solve uh, often we don't think about what it is that we are going to solve for other people what is the issue what is the problem that we're going to solve i always ask people that the the value that you are going to provide to other people what problem is it going to solve for that audience so the first thing is think about what problem I, am i going to solve that's the first thing uh, the second thing is really make sure that you know who your audience is um, often we create products. I see a lot of people create products or they create programs or they create services, but they don't truly know who they're targeting. So the first thing that I would say is think about the problem that you're going to solve, know who your target audience is, and also make sure that that is what your audience wants from you right? We're in a stage where everyone is starting a business. Everyone wants to be an entrepreneur. We sit down, we create these products. Uh, we just put things out there because it's what we want to sell. It's something that we wanted to do, but we don't really take the time online to figure out if this is even what the people who follow us want from us. And the way we do that is by studying the data, studying the analytics, seeing what people are more responsive to. And sometimes just even as going as far as asking people, what do you want from me? Right? How can I help you? What is the value that I can add to your business? So I would say the first three steps, the first thing is what's the, what solution are you bringing to the table? Because that is going to determine how far your business can go. The second thing is who is your audience? Why are these people even following you? You may want to start a boutique, but they may follow you for an entire different reason. They might not even think that fashion is the thing for you, right? So you have to take the time to know why these people follow me. And then last but not least, make sure that you are actually interviewing your audience, asking them, what do you want? Who they are? Taking a look at the photos. These are just some of the things that I tell people um, when they're trying to figure out a lot of people, they have big followings, but they don't understand why their audience is not shopping from them. I have people who have beautiful hair, but they're selling clothes and the clothes aren't selling. Well, 
actually the people are following you because it's big curly hair that you had. So you probably should have launched a hair product instead, but you wanted to personally do a boutique. So it's really about taking the time to get to know your audience. Um, I also always tell people that come to me to really take the time to connect and develop the relationship with their audience. So you can kind of figure out why they why they're even connecting with you overall so are you spending time going live with your audience are you responding to the comments that they're putting on your pages are you taking the time to see the pictures that they're engaging with the things that are being shared this will help you find your niche and really help you figure out what it is that you need to launch and what people want from you overall so if you i love analytics so when you started what were the the, the top three analytical measurements that you use when, when you were about to pitch the product so for me, one of the ways that I, I, I still use this to this day, I look at the product, I look at the pictures on my page. I go to the analytics and I look at what pictures are getting the most engagement. For me, it is my selfies. It is, of course, uh, me educating when I'm giving away tools as far as entrepreneurship and ways to grow, biz grow their businesses, ways to make money. Those are the things that I look at. So I know that people follow me for a few things. They follow me for fashion. They follow me for uh, business education. And then they also follow me for self-care types of things. So when I study my analytics, I can see that, okay, this picture here where I'm doing a facial, it got about 75,000 or 100,000 impressions. Okay, this is what they want to see more of. Or if I post a picture of my, my kids, people want to see your family. Sometimes they don't always want to be sold, 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 sold. They want to connect with you on a more intimate level. You know, you have to think about it. You look at some of your favorite celebrities. Do you want to sit there and see them sell stuff to you all day? Or do you want to see what they're doing behind the scenes, what their everyday life looks like, right? Do you want to see them with their children, their family, just goofing off, dancing, having a good time? Sometimes people want to see that intimate time with you and they want to see that they want to have that intimate connection with you before they actually buy your stuff yeah i'm a, I'm a big believer in that mm -hmm. as far as social media i spent a lot of time on social media learning social media um like when i say a lot of time like <laughs> years like 12 hours a day sleepless nights. yeah every day for like four years so first of all i want to i don't want people to get discouraged if they don't have a lot of followers because I have 500, I think I have like 113 on my personal page. Mm -hmm. Earn Your Leisure has 200 and how much? 243,000. So we start, I have 500 followers when I started this whole thing on my personal page. And Earn Your Leisure had no followers. We, we had one, two followers at the first two. day. I, I wasn't one Troy of them. wasn't even following the page <laughs> after the, to the second day. So that's the first thing. I, I don't want people to get discouraged by the amount of followers you have. Because my personal belief is that if you provide good content... It'll, it'll happen over the course of time. Mm -hmm. We have a whole podcast about how to build a social media following if you want to check that out, episode 24B. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, but another thing is, I'm glad you said as far as selling. I think a lot of times people are too pushy. Yeah. And it, it comes off and it's like, you just get on social media and the first thing you do is you're selling something. And it's like nonstop. And it's so obvious that the only reason you're on here is to sell. It's like, I personally think people don't mind buying as long as they don't feel like they're trying to be scammed or you're just pushing it down their throat. Like I'm a big believer in the soft sell. So even for me, a lot of times I learned like even flyers, promoting things like flyers, it gets caught in the algorithm no and traction. they don't nobody actually even sees the flyer. So a lot of times what we'll do as far as the social media campaigns that we run, if we're trying to promote an event or if we're trying to promote something, we'll do a soft sell with as far as we'll we'll promote it in the caption. Like I'll I'll, I'll post something that I know is gonna get a lot of views or a lot of likes and it's gonna reach a large amount of people. And then in the caption it'll be like we're headed to DC this weekend. If you're interested, the link in our bio, da 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 or twenty percent off of this situation or whatever. So I know at the very least, everybody might not read the caption, yeah. but more people will read the caption than if I just put a flyer up. They put like 70 people liked it. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Flyers on my page get zero engagement. Yeah. No, I think, yeah, the, nobody's fl flyers yeah. get engagement. And I did I did the math on it because um, I, I was just like, I was interested. Like I said, like, I, I love doing the analytics. It literally, um, on Earn Your Leisure's page, it was like a seventh of a percent of the people actually saw it. So I was like, let me just see. I'll do that calculation. I went to Shadi's page. 
it was literally the same thing a seventh of a percent get to actually see the flyers so then i was like let me check on mine it was the same exact thing so think about that you have two hundred and forty three thousand followers Less than 1% of the people who are following you are actually going to see that. Well, they, they do that on purpose because Instagram has an algorithm. Mm -hmm. If anybody's not familiar with that's what I keep referring to. So the algorithm spits out to see it, it's designed so that people see the post that they like the most. So if yeah. you post something that's kind of different from what you usually post, it's not going to get a lot of traction. Instagram also... They, they, they can tell if something is a flyer or not. The reason why they limit that flyer is because they know you're promoting something. So that's what they, they have. they want ads. to invest in ads. Exactly. Yeah. That's what they have ads for. So why are they going to give you free promotion for something that you're getting paid for when you can pay Instagram Same. for yep. ads? So that's why I'm saying you got to be creative. That's why we use captions or we'll do, like you said, the lives. The lives are extremely powerful. Um, now you got to kind of be creative to work around that. Because if not, you can just pay a bunch of money to Instagram. Might work, it might not work. That's a different conversation altogether. But <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, so we're we talking about the person with no marketing budget. Oh <laughs> yeah, it's it's a gamble. It's a gamble. You know, that's a whole nother that's a whole nother conversation. But it's like you're paying for clicks. You're not paying for conversions. So just because someone's clicking the ad doesn't mean that they're actually buying anything, and you're paying every single time for a click. Not this person converted. Yes. And also, I like what you said as well as far as like, what are they following you for? Because yeah. I had a young lady who came into my office a while back and we <laughs> were speaking and she's 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 a very popular bartender. Star tender. Star tender. <laughs> um, in the city. What is that? Uh, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> okay. <laughs> nah, nah. Star tenders is like in, in New York City. We don't know how it is. Well, COVID cut everything down, but the bartenders were more popular than the dancers uh okay. so they became so like when a boogie made that song star tenders they became like celebrities like the bartenders are the celebrities yeah. so she was a bartender star tender and she had like three million followers but she couldn't make any money because now you got three million people but people are only following you for lingerie pictures and things I of that know. nature yeah. so if you if you try to promote anything if you try to promote something like a course, then they're, they're not going to take it serious. Yeah. Whereas somebody that might have a hundred thousand followers, which is lay, way less followers, but they're following them for a specific reason, right? Mm -hmm. Like you, they're following you because it's a page to empower women about how to become entrepreneurs, right? So now you have a course, a portal, whatever. It's way more opportunity to make revenue off yeah. of a smaller amount of people than a bit so why i say i have to say a lot of times and not to knock anybody you you got to follow and you do whatever you want i can't you know can't knock the hustle but sometimes you just do things just to get a following yeah and it's like okay there's you, no angle you're doing all this to just to get a following now you got a bunch of followers but how do you actually benefit from that so yeah. that, that kind of leads into what my next question was, was right? Because now that you had the following, now it's the, how do you build the community, right? Like, how do you convert that into now a community? What are some steps that, that you had to actually convert those followers? I hate when people say that they have fans, right? Like, what do you, what, why are they a fan of you? They're actually a community. Like, that's what you're trying to build. What are some steps that you use? Well, the first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you're building a list. I tell people this all the time. Your list is the most valuable thing that you have and if you don't know what a list is it is you having a list of email addresses and people are actually opting in so that you do not rely on social media uh, to connect to your audience your goal is to get your audience offline as fast as possible and when i say as fast as possible i mean you being able to connect with them off of social media. So the first thing you want to do is you want to start building a list. And in order for you to build a list, you need to be providing some type of value, whether you're in fashion and you're teaching people how to do different fashion looks, or you're doing hair and you're teaching people how to do this style in under two minutes, or you may be doing fingernails, whatever it is that you have the expertise in, whatever that problem is that you are solving, you need to be creating content and value and getting your people to actually opt in to get that value. So the list building is most important, right? People have followers. I see people that have millions, millions of followers. I mean, 500,000, 1 million, 2 million, but I don't see an opt-in anywhere on their social media. 
So you have over a million impressions a week. Most people that have a hundred thousand followers or more, they have about a, a million impressions a week. Okay. There's no opt in or lead generation tool on your page at all. There's no freebie. You're not giving anything away that's going to position you to capture their information. That's a big mistake. So the first thing that I did was create a list building tool, an opt-in. And I've constantly focused on providing value to my audience. While everybody else is trying to sell information, I'm just giving the information away. Because once I give them a certain amount of information, they're going to know and trust and believe that I know what I'm talking about and that I can help them in this area. Yeah, so that's, those are the top two things. That's extremely important. Dana Chanel, shout out to her. Shout out to Prince Donnell, EYL alumni, both of them. And they that's something that Dana Chanel spoke about a lot on our podcast yeah. is, you know, her thing is apps. She was like, everybody should have an app. But even if you don't have an app, like you said, at the very least, you should be capturing emails and phone numbers. Because now, like, you have an email list that you can blast out. Yeah. You don't have to rely on a social media following. So, and then, like you said, one of the one of the best ways to capture emails is free situations, a free event, mm -hmm. a free webinar. People do that all the time, um, and it's not like you're deceiving people, but you're getting their information. Yeah. And for the 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 value that you're providing within that free webinar or a giveaway or sweepstakes or whatever. Most of the time when you see people do sweepstakes or giveaways, it's because they're trying to get information. So they like email this and yeah. one person's going to win. So if you get a thousand emails, it's worth the price of giving a, a gift to one person. Mm. But now you got a thousand emails added. So now you can blast it out to a thousand people. Yeah. And, and as it grows, you just have more people. That, that's something that, that, that I found astonishing. They was like, yeah, get every email, get every phone number. And they, they had down, their analytics was so incredible. They were like, look, the conversion rate on emails is like 5%, but the conversion rate on somebody on a text message might be like 27%. So that's why yeah. it's important to know these things and to collect that data. It's, it's, it's gold, it's literally gold. Yeah. And, and for sure, I would definitely say right now, you know, emails was, five years ago and you can still get emails but right now my main focus is being able to come straight to the cell phone so definitely go text message and having an app is great too but you got to get them to turn on the post the notifications and people turn notifications off so you can have an app and then you send those notifications out but if they don't have those notifications on then you're missing it so the best thing that you can do is get the text right now get that phone number you actually created an app correct yeah, I do have an app as well, so that's how I know. Like, <laughs> like, if they turn those notifications off, then it's like marketing is all about being visible, out of sight, out of mind. If the notifications are off or you send out too many notifications a day, the people will turn them off and then you disappear out of their world completely. So the best thing that you can do is add value and also have a healthy text list. There, there, was, there were two guys at once upon a time, well, actually four guys at the time, to try to create an app, it uh, failed miserably. Oh, yeah, that's another thing. That's another <laughs> what, what thing. What was that I'm process kidding. like for you? So for me, it's been it's been crazy. I'm actually having an app developed right now. Okay. So there's a there's always a language barrier there, and most of the the time they're on a different time you schedule. Are, you so in India, India. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, we, we know something about that. <laughs> yeah, we got burnt. We got burnt. We got burnt bad in India. Y'all got burnt? Yeah. 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 Wow. It's well documented. Well documented. Ca cautionary tale. <laughs> cautionary tale. Ooh, yeah. So, you know, there's always a language barrier and there's always the time difference. So you got to stay up to about 10, 11 o'clock to start those conversations. So it's really interesting. Um, but like I said, you really have to add the value for people to want to stay around. You have to give away free game. If you are at a space and you're listening to this podcast and you still think that you need to sell every piece of information that you have, you're going to lose and you're going to lose big. You better start adding value to people's lives quick because that's the only way you're going to get a return on your investment. So let me ask you this. Um, the, the the thing with the uh the text message blast is that it's it's very expensive. Donnell told us what platform he I forgot. But what what platform do you use? Like how expensive is it? Because I know it can it can be like really really expensive. Yeah, it's probably, for, yeah, for a the lot text. more pricey than emails. Yeah. 
So, watch, I should have an affiliate link before I say their name, but <laughs> I'm using a text boom right now. I think they're really cool. Um, I'm actually in the process of trying to build my own text blast system because that's what I'm on right now. It's so, like I look at how much money I spend with these companies and I'm like, let me build my own platform. So, that's really the direction that I've been going in uh, this year, formulating my own apps and products so that I can use my own stuff. Sp- spoken like a true entrepreneur. That's a fact. A fisherman always spots another fisherman from afar. <laughs> I like. I'm very familiar with the language that you're talking right now. It's right up my alley. Um, so let me ask you this, because I personally feel like um, Instagram ads, right? Because not to say that I don't want to say Instagram ads are bad. You can still run ads for people, but I think that people kind of don't really have a good idea of what they're doing with Instagram ads. Like even in our space, I think it's the financial page. I think a lot of financial pages have soured it because they, they're running these ads for so cheap, like $25. Like they might have a half a million followers and they running like $25 ads for people. And not only are they devaluing their page because there's so many different, like it's like 10 ads back to back to back. But now it's like, you, you're you're lowering the value for everybody yeah, else. Yeah. So we don't really even run it. We don't run a lot of ads on our page because we just don't want to do it. But our price is way higher than anybody else. We do that for a reason to try to keep people away from yeah, if that. You, if you're not serious, then you're not going to do it. But, you know, it's kind of a rule of thumb. Some people say like $1,000 for every 100,000 followers. That's, that's how much you should charge. Um, what do you think somebody should charge to run an ad on their page based off of like their following. Yeah, so I do know that right now because I work with a lot of companies that reach out to me for ads. Um, if you are right now, social media marketing for influencers are crazy. So if you're anywhere in between the hundred to two hundred thousand follower range, you can make anywhere from five to ten thousand dollars for a paid post from a company. Um, if you are at anywhere from two hundred to five hundred thousand. You could literally the rates right now for something like that is anywhere from ten to twenty five to thirty thousand for an actual pay post with a corporate company, and um, anything from five five hundred thousand to a million, we're talking crazy numbers right now with influencer marketing. I've seen companies pay people that I personally know um, anywhere from thirty to fifty thousand dollars for pay posts. And that's something that is important. And the reason why I say not to shame any page that's charging a very low amount, but I think a lot of times we don't take ourselves serious enough. So to kind of use a comparison like the NFL, right? Mm -hmm. The NFL has 100 million viewers for a Super Bowl and for a 30 second ad, they charge $5 million for 30 seconds. Now you can do the math on that, divide that by the 100 and then see how much they're actually charging per person that's watching the Super Bowl. But a lot of times as a small business, you got to think the same way, right? Like why not look at yourself as the NFL? Obviously, you don't have 100 million people on your page, mm-hmm. but you have 10,000, 50,000, 100,000. Sure. So it's like you're devaluing your brand and you're devaluing the, the, the business for everybody yeah. by charging $25 or $30. And it's like a lot of times people are scared to say, okay, well, they might not accept it. Well, you got to figure this. If you're doing it for $50 an ad, right, and you were doing an a hundred a thousand dollars let's say fifty dollars worth a thousand dollars right how many fifty dollars is it going to take you exactly. to equal a thousand twenty so now you got to get 20 people to say yes to 50. it's probably yeah. it's probably easier to get one person to say yes to a thousand than it is to get 20 people to say yes to 50. so you you don't need as many people it's less volume and you're not flooding your pages and it's not looking like crazy with 37 ads every hour yeah. Yeah. And you're keeping your integrity. Exactly. Or you could even, like I said, you could even do two for five hundred, right? It's, it's gonna lo- it's gonna lower it. And like you said, the people who are serious about their business and are plan on having a marketing budget, that five hundred is gonna it's gonna be worthwhile. And people have to realize too. It's like people's like, well, it's not costing you anything if you put. No, it costs a lot because it, it it's. It costs a lot to have 200,000 followers. It's a lot of work that goes into building a following. So, and creating that content is a lot of work too. Exactly, exactly. So you can't, you can't just throw that away and just say, okay, it took me three years to, to build this brand, to build this page, and I'm going to sell it for $25 ad slots. Yeah. <laughs> right, they're just doing one-offs for $50. Like, it makes no sense. 
It's ridiculous. Um, and then also another thing I like about ads too, and I'm saying I got this from Val. Shout out to her. She's one of the first people I saw do it. Where, like, if we run a, if we run a, a paid post on so on social media, it's not obvious that it's paid. Like, it's like. I feel like you got to have some integrity and some some taste to it. Right. So like you know, it's a story, and it's saying like you know, it's obvious that obviously you know somebody posted, but it's not like to say okay, here it is a flyer, and this person is like you got to come with a story. It has to make sense. It has to in line with yeah. other stuff that we usually post. So it's not like completely out of pocket at all. Yeah. And I saw her do that. She had a Calvin Klein, I think, ad, and she's a school teacher. So it's like how you mix being a school teacher with a Calvin Klein ad. But yeah. the way she did it was very tastefully done. And you didn't really even know it was an ad until you saw a hashtag ad. It, it's important because at that time, like she knows her brand and she knows what matches her brand. We've had some offers that just didn't make sense for us to be doing some of the offers that we were being presented with. Um, but that's important too, knowing your brand and understanding your brand. Yeah. For sure, and knowing your audience. That's a fact, that's a fact. Um, and then, okay, so the last thing I wanted to talk about was how do you feel about, um, so we talked about ads, we talked about building a community, but like a course situation, because that's something that's extremely popular these days. Is, what um, is it? A course, course. Oh, course, course. for sure. So mm-hmm. courses are huge right now. Yeah. There's all kinds of courses for everything. And I'm, I'm a big fan of it, because I, I, like, I look at it like, you know, if you're gonna pay money to make mistakes, like and learn on your own, why not get a course for a thousand dollars, five hundred, whatever? And it's pretty much you can get a course on real estate, stocks, social media marketing, all that stuff, all of the above. Pick a topic. But but I, I think even the course has to be done correctly, has to be promoted correctly. But that's another revenue stream for people as well. Um, so what's your thoughts on that? I think courses are amazing. You know, I think they're great. I think that it's really about finding the experts and people who actually have experience um, in the actual niche markets that they're teaching on right now. Courses are cool, but we also have people who haven't done anything and they're just creating these courses. So you have to be careful as well. You have people who have not had a lot of experience and they're just creating courses. So for me, I think that courses are great, but we need to make sure that people have skin in the game and that we can see the results and they can actually teach us. I'm really big on intimacy and people being able to actually talk to me and connect with me and and touch me. They need to feel that when working with me. So I think for me, that's at the top of my list. Courses are cool, but the value needs to be there and the intimacy needs to be there if the price is, you know, at a certain point. Yeah, and I always tell people all the time, entrepreneurs, never be ashamed to make money. Like, I think a lot of times people, especially when it comes to education, people are kind of weirded out a little bit. Like, I don't want to charge for this. Like, I mean, if you're if you're putting together something that's going to take your time, and it's it's something that you have information and you can benefit people and it's done tastefully i mean it's like why not yeah. i think i think the biggest thing is like even with like online subscription is that my thing is that you have to give 10 times more value than what you're charging that's just like how i no matter what it is so mm-hmm. it's like even for our thing eyl university is an online platform that has like over 70 courses weekly webinars a private real estate facebook group all that stuff and we're running a code now where it's like you can get it for 199 dollars for the entire year so it's like we haven't had one complaint yet with some like yeah, that that's got- really affordable by the way let me let me just say <laughs> that. Uh, yeah it's it's, it's <laughs> yeah we've that been price told. that price is going up that price is going up we've but, been told. but yeah so it's like you know it's like you can't say you didn't get your money's worth. That's yeah. a, that literally is impossible. So, you know, I just think that I just I wanted to say that because I, I, I don't want to discourage entrepreneurs from having courses, having online subscription services. I don't I think it's great, but just make sure you're doing it for the right reason and you're adding value value. Oh, simple. don't like a lot of time. Like you said, people are not even experts in their field. And they're having these courses or they're having these programs and it's like you you just started last yeah. week what's the proof what uh, what you say it, it, show me your mentor and show me the bank account to see if i can trust you yeah i don't even want to say the bank account <laughs> because it's like the Danish I, I just that. feel like experience it's like you know yeah. like you said like you have to kind of or network with professionals right mm-hmm. it's like so i you know that's another way to make money online right in full transparency i mean it's obvious but 
it's, it's it could be very lucrative, but you just have to make sure that it's done tastefully and you're adding value. Money's always going to come on the back end as long as you put value first. Yeah. Can, can we can can we talk about uh, your platform a little bit? Uh, Girl CEO Inc. Um, yes. I, I love I love it, man. How how to turn your side hustle into a serious cash flow? Um, it's a solution for for women who who lack a blueprint for success. And one of the the best things I heard um, from you speaking it was like. It's empowerment over fear because a lot of times when we want to get into things we struggle and we've been shamed into struggle and, and i know you, you talk about sharing your shame is one of the things can you talk about girl ceo and and, and all, what it's all about yeah so girl ceo is a platform and um it's literally the playground for female entrepreneurs we are a no fluff zone so um we equipped we don't empower we equip i'm so kind of over the empowerment word i'm really big on equipping and educating we really just get to the meat and potatoes in business so we're really big on real resources real tools and real information to help women scale their businesses uh, we connect with our members uh daily inside of our community we do a live master class inside of our community for our actual members and we bring experts in as well uh, to educate them give them tools and resources to help them grow and scale their businesses so we like information we don't like motivation we tell people all the time you can get motivation on youtube you can get uh quote grams on youtube you don't need any more quote grams posted inside the community we need tools we need resources we want to know the software that you that you're using we want to know about your funnel we want to know about that pixel we want to know about retargeting ads we want to know the real game so that is what we strive to put in front of our members every single day for sure so all right so that in the last segment we're gonna bring it home and um yeah just add a little bit more value and put some more spice on it so all right so in the last segment we're gonna bring it home but um i just had one question before first um so i know you said side hustle to cash flow that's one of the things i saw on your page so how what does that mean as far as side hustle to cash flow because a lot of people are trying to become entrepreneurs today especially with coronavirus a lot of people have lost their jobs and they might have different talents whether it's doing hair or whether it's you know designing clothes Cooking. or whatever yeah. so what was what's how do you how do we turn a side hustle into a cash flow opportunity i think that the side hustle turns into actual cash flow and consistent revenue when we have systems in place initially when we are just hustling we are doing whatever we can do to make a dollar but when we actually sit down and we have systems in place with our businesses and we understand what people want we understand who our audience is we we have our email list we have our graphic design we have our post schedule set up we know uh because we study our analytics that's when things go from side hustle to an actual functioning business right when you can literally predict what the profits are going to be because you're you study the analytics and i think that's when you transition out of side hustle mode the side hustle is just like i'm trying to get a dollar as fast as i can i'm doing everything by myself um i remember being that person like i'm <laughs> it's like you go to mcdonald's mcdonald's is not taking the order dropping the fries cleaning the bathroom and doing a million things restocking the ketchup one person isn't doing that. So I think that we transition into major cash flow when we understand our business, when it's mapped out clearly, when we can make predictions based on uh, our, our actual analytics and we know, okay, the last two years we've made this amount of money, right? Sometimes we make predictions based on uh, when we just launch, but what is the income going to look for that business three to four years down the line, right? Do you have systems in place? Do you have tools in place? Do you have your email list? Do you have your, your person that's going to run your ads? Do you have your graphic designer? I believe that we transition out of side hustle when we have systems, services, software in place, when we have a team, when we have our post schedule, we have things actually set up the right way, even as far as the legal entities behind our businesses. You know, I have so many people that think that if we just set up an Instagram account, we, we're a business. We have an Instagram name. I own that name. Whatever that page is, that's what we own. So for me, going from side hustle mentality, that's when mentally you're not all the way there. Right. I, I remember when I was in side hustle mode, when I was in side hustle mode, I was in a desperate place. 
I was in a desperate place. I just needed to make money to survive. But when I was all in and I created a business, it wasn't just about making the dollar quick. It was about making sure that I'm building and creating something that can last 10 to 20 years from now, building a legacy business versus a side hustle business. Yeah, that's powerful. That's extremely powerful. And um, working from home, I want to, because like I said, I mean, we we have a large women listenership yep. and we want to, some, some topics are more relevant than others for, for women. But one of the things you said early on was like spending time with your children and for for everybody, men and women, but a lot of time women struggle with that as far as, you know, not being able to spend. That stops, I think, a lot of women from becoming entrepreneurs. So one of the great things now is that you can start a business and you're working at home. So what are the, what are some of the benefits, perks, challenges, being a full-time mother, being a full-time entrepreneur working from home? Because that's a, that's a whole different conversation yeah. as well. Yeah, I mean, right now we're we're in the middle of COVID nineteen. Who knows? I hope I don't know if you guys are airing this during this time or not. But right now we're in the middle of COVID nineteen, and I'm a mom, so I have three children that are in school right now. So doing the digital online learning has been new for me, and my company solely pays my bills, right? So mm-hmm. I have. Juggle. It's been hard. Yeah. And as much as I want to be one of those people, you know, we see every these women that go online and like, yeah, I have this perfect schedule. I have it all mapped out. Dinner is made at this time. Brunch is done at this time. I'm doing my exercise at this time. I don't. I don't. <laughs> Most of us don't. <laughs> yeah, I don't. And it's hard. It's hard. But I'm just thankful. I think one of the perks is. My daughter, I was actually working with a client before I did this webinar and she was holding the camera up and she walked in while I was actually helping one of my clients. And she said, this is my working mom, you guys. And she said, say, turn around, I'm going to turn the camera around. And I want you guys to say hi to her. But she addressed me as her working mom. And I think one of the perks, even in that moment, I was just, I felt so proud to be her mom, that she acknowledged me in that way because I'm now showing her that women can work hard, women can have that financial stability and that there's balance there. You know, when I was growing up, I was in school when my mom was working. I was in school when my dad was working. There wasn't anyone there to show me how to run a business. No one ever talked to me about entrepreneurship. My family always encouraged me to go and work for someone else. So to be able to have my children here, it's changed the mindset of my kids because my kids want to be entrepreneurs now. So I'm showing them versus telling them. And I believe that people listen more when you show them versus when you just tell them what they should do. Yeah. So like you said, that they, they're becoming entrepreneurs. That they have any businesses that they've started or they're interested in right now? Well, my daughter, you can probably hear her screaming through the door right now. She wants to be an actor. So she's always acting. She has her own line within my company. And my 17-year-old daughter, she's actually um, in high school. And while she's in high school, she's getting her cosmetology license. So she's actually doing hair on the side right now. So, yes, my children are definitely uh, their side hustlers. That's beautiful. That's yeah. beautiful. I know. I know you dabble. You uh, you have a fashion line as well, right? You you have some some stuff in fashion as well. No, so we have Girl CL Look of the Weeks, and we just do different looks. But we mostly have merchandise that empower women that say like Girl CL on it or things motivational merchandise for the women who are in our community and outside the community who uh, are starting their journeys as well. So what what is it like as far as social media? I know Instagram. Um, has been like your main focus. It's been our main focus as well. But there's a lot of stuff, even with TikTok now, Facebook, um, Twitter. Would you suggest that people would focus their energy on one particular platform, growing a social media following, or should they diversify and kind of spread themselves across all all areas? Um, I would say start with one or two. I would say definitely start with one or two. You're going to have to diversify because things are changing. For sure, but I would definitely say start with one or two. Um, Don't overextend yourself trying to be on every single platform, Um, but I would definitely say find two that that are working for you. Some don't work. You know, some may work for some people and then others don't work for others. So I say focus on what's working for you. Yeah, 
I, I agree. I agree. I mean, like I said, I. I, I understand Instagram like the back of my hand. I go on Twitter. I don't even know how to use it properly. Yeah, like I just we, learned how to late, how to put to a that. thread <laughs> tweet together yesterday, actually. Um, so you know, but I mean, the more people you can reach, the better. So That's I would good. definitely say you know it's it's a good idea to be on those platforms. But you know, figure out how to master one, then you can master the other ones, and then kind of like you know figure it out from there um all right so yes before we wrap this up i wanted to talk about it because um so you have a six-week program where you help entrepreneurs is it just women that you work with or is it just focused on what like what's the deal with that so i have men and women that actually take my my course okay so you have a six-week course where you help entrepreneurs master online business and social media and things of that nature can you talk about that yeah, so my course is called the Success Prerequisite, and it is a six-week course to help people build their brands online. Um, the main focus is really helping people find their voice and be more authentic themselves um, and really understanding how to use the internet when doing it. Uh, we focus on everything from storytelling, brand storytelling, lead generation, automating your business, um, being able to set your business up in a way where you can actually attract leads and generate traffic in your sleep. And then we also teach influencer marketing as well. Mm, nice. and, yeah. and you, you have from mopping floors to making millions on Instagram. You're an uh, established author. We got any more books coming down the line? I'm working on a book right now, actually. Uh, my next book is going to talk about transitioning from corporate America into full-time entrepreneurship. Okay. Dope. And in the course, we have the link in the bio if you're listening to this on Apple, Spotify, or YouTube. And just for our community, EYL community, you gave a special deal. You gave $100 off of the package. And that's exclusive. That's only for EYL community. And, uh, I mean, the program is, is dope. I actually looked through it. And, um, you know, that six-week program is powerful. And it's like especially to be able to monetize your platform on social media. You don't have to have a large social media following to make money. You can make money with a couple thousand followers you can make i saw it personally mg or mortgage guy sell out an event and make over thirty thousand dollars with five thousand followers yeah, at the time this, this was part of. early early on yep. i said wait what's going on yeah five thousand followers so social media marketing and just growing online is extremely extremely valuable um so once again we appreciate that so yeah, thank you the link the link will be in the bio of this video if you're watching it on YouTube it will also be in the buy in the link of uh, the description of Apple in the description of Spotify and once again that's a hundred dollars off exclusively for EYL community and it will also be on our website on the EYL alumni tab so yeah. if you're interested definitely check that out that, that's a game advantage. that's a game changer yeah. so yeah appreciate that thank you Anything that you want to make the public aware of, how can they contact you, social media handles, uh, website, um, anything like that? Yeah, so everyone can come and check me out on Instagram. My Instagram is on Brown, <laughs> R-O-N-N-E, -R -O -N -N -E, Brown, at, on Instagram. And my company, Girl CEO, is Girl CEO INC. Um, you can also check out the Girl CEO community as well at joingirlceo.com. Uh, and we give everyone free for 30 days. That's how confident we are in the actual content. You can watch as many of the master classes as you want. Um, and cancel whenever you please. Dope, dope. Awful. Troy, housekeeping item? Yeah, shout out to everybody on Patreon.com. That is our Proud to Pay program. It is growing at a rapid pace. We appreciate everybody on there. You know if you join, there are five different tiers to come in and uh, be a part of this. Uh, tier 4 and 5 obviously gives you access to EYL University, our online school, which has over 70 webinars, a uh, book club, a private real estate face Facebook group. It's a, it's a really... It's a really uh, amazing community. I, I don't even want to call it anything else but that. It's a community uh, people have shared experiences and shared resources. So thank you everybody that has joined there and everybody that's been purchasing the merch on EarnYourLeisure.com. Uh, we appreciate your support. Continue doing that. Yeah, and shout out to the whole DMV. We got a lot of love and support there. Shout out to yeah, PG. Shout out, yeah, that's a fact. Shout out to PG County. Shout out to Montgomery County. Shout out to Baltimore. And shout out to D.C. Some of our best guests and some of our uh, most prestigious alumni have come from the D.C. DMV, DMV area. area. Yeah, 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 for sure. So shout out to that. And once again, thank you for joining us. Appreciate it. Um, we will see you guys next week. Peace. Peace. <laughs>